This patient was referred to me six months ago. And here's the date, as you can see. Today's date is 11-12-2024. And the date, as again, when he was referred to me, 4-23-2024, about six months ago, for examination and evaluation of tooth number 19. Take a look here. Composite, restoration. Look at that huge periperiodontal associated with the tooth. Also, it's very important to be able to read radiographs and if you can read radiographs, then you can see that there is also inflammatory resorption associated with this tooth right here. The patient is only 27 years old. Let me show you different angulations of the tooth so you can appreciate the extent of bone destruction associated with this tooth. Look at this. Look how large. Look at that. Huge lucencies, as you can see here. And also, you can see the inflammatory root resorption and cervical associated with the tooth. Here, the resorption has also created a lucency, bone destruction, as you can see right there. And also, you can see the external root resorption as well associated with the tooth all of this look at that all of that resorption all of that again patient is 27 years old now you some of you would comment on this case and would say that this tooth root canal would be a waste of time would be a waste of time and money for this patient and I should not have done the root canal in this case. Again, you can see the inflammatory resorption there. You can see the extent of the periperiodontal here. As I said, some of you would comment on this case and say this tooth did not um, deserve a root canal. Patient wasted their money and I was greedy and dishonest and what have you for doing a root canal on this case. I shouldn't have done a root canal on this case and should have just recommended extraction. Again, patient is 27 years old. Well, I discussed options with the patient. I went over root canal, repair of the resorption, resorptive defects with the patient, the prognosis, risk, benefits, and everything, and also discussed with the patient the option of extraction and implant. And patient, as I said, patient is 27 years old. Patient decided that he wanted to try to save the tooth. And that's what we did for him. So take a look here. And again here, you can see the extent. Huge. These peripheral lucencies, as you can see, they're huge. And again, you can see the inflammatory root resorption associated with the tooth. Also, by the way, take a look here. That's the tooth here. Composite. ML composite. And you can see a sinus tract also associated with the tooth. Look at all the plaque. That's sitting around the tooth there. So, as I said, we went ahead and did the root canal for this patient. These were 25 millimeter long roots. And take a look here. This is the final product, four canal systems. The resorptive defect was associated with the coronal one-third of the mesiobuccal canal. So I went ahead and filled that part of the mesiobuccal canal with MTA to repair the resorptive defect. And here, as you can see, that's MTA right here. You can see a lucency that was associated. So there was definitely a communication to the inside of the tooth from the outside. There was a defect, a large size defect, and this is all MTA. And we did this endodontic treatment in one appointment. You can see the sealer is tracing the sinus tract up. So this is sealer tracing the sinus tract that I showed you. Up, tracing it. So we did this root canal in one appointment, 25 millimeter long canals, four canals, sealer, puffs and extrusion, MTA repair of the resorptive defect. And you can, again, see the huge size of this periapical relucency. Let me 
show you another angulation. This is another angulation. And again, you can see here's the date when we completed this endodontic treatment and resorptive defect repair in one appointment. And here's today's date, as you can see, about six months ago. So patient came back today for his six months post-op. We'll redoing, we'll doing this root canal, we'll doing this root canal in one appointment, cause endodontic failure, doing the root canal in one appointment and resorptive defect repair with MTA in one appointment, cause endodontic failure, will sealer extrusion cause endodontic failure. Did this tooth even deserve with the issues and problems that he had to begin with? Did we make a mistake doing this root canal at all? According to some of you, should we have just went ahead and extracted this tooth? Well, let's take a look at the six months post-op, which was yesterday. So a patient comes in for his six months post-op and take a look here. Tooth has a crown on it now. Patient has zero symptoms. The buckle sinus tract was gone completely. Tooth is in full function. No symptoms whatsoever. Patient is extremely happy. And look, look at this beautiful healing in only six months. Remember that huge periapical relucency that we started with? Look how much smaller it's gotten only six months. The resorption, the inflammatory resorption has stopped. So no more of the tooth has been destroyed by the inflammatory process. And again, you can see the periapical relucency has gotten much, much smaller. And this is the date when we saw him, which was yesterday. And this is today's date again. Today's the 12th when we saw him yesterday was 11, 11. So six months post-op of tooth number 19. So to the haters, usually people hate when they can't do it themselves. So they hate on the rest of us who have the science and the knowledge and the talent <laughs> and we can do it. They can't do it. So the only thing that they can do is extraction and replacement with a dental implant. Even that they don't do. They usually refer that to an oral surgeon to do because they don't even have the talent to do that. But they wouldn't even give a tooth like this a chance or at least discuss the possibilities with the patient. They just go straight to extraction. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't be so narrow-minded. A lot of these teeth, as you can see, such as this one, can be easily saved. As long as you know what you're doing, you know the science, and you have the skills and the talent to be able to do a procedure like that. And this was not an easy procedure for a general dentist or even some endodontist. This was a complicated procedure. But as long as you have the science, the knowledge, and the talent, you can do it and you can save a lot of these teeth. Remember, we try to do what's best for our patients. So don't be so narrow-minded. A lot of these teeth can be saved. And as you can see, I'm showing you that here as well. So let me put the x-rays next to each other so you can see what we were able to accomplish and how much healing we got in only six months. And here it is. Take a look here. Six months ago, before we did the root canal again in one appointment, along with the repair of the resortive defect and six months post-op of the tooth. Look at the huge periapical lucencies here and look at how much bone repair we were able to achieve in only six months. So six months ago before the endodontic treatment and again you can see the resorptive defect there as well. And here's the date. And this was just yesterday. And here's the date. Six months post-op of tooth number 19. So doing the root canal in one appointment. Doing the root canal was not a mistake. As you can see, the tooth is saved. Patient has zero symptoms, no sinus tract. Probing is all within normal limits. Percussion, palpation, everything's within normal limits. Patient has no symptoms whatsoever. Tooth is in full function. Doing the root canal and resorptive defect repair in one appointment did not cause endodontic failure. So me not doing this root canal in multiple appointments did not cause endodontic failure. Sealer extrusion did not cause endodontic failure either. So six months post-op of this complicated case, tooth number 19.